Hello, my name is Dr. Richard Call, and welcome to Nine. A show that examines the social, political, and economic faces of modern day medicine. And I'm pleased to be here today with an expert in minimally invasive spine surgery, Dr. Irfan Aladdin. Thank you. Good afternoon, Dr. Aladdin. <laughs> And we're going to be talking today uh, about minimally invasive spine surgery. Now, Dr. Aladdin, uh, this section of healthcare has gotten a lot of attention over the last few years. There's been uh, a number of high profile uh, professional battles in the field of yes. minimally invasive spine surgery. But a lot of the public uh, and uh, viewers of this show uh, aren't really sure what the term means, minimally invasive spine surgery, sure. what exactly it is. And I'd like to ask you, to, if you could, to explain what minimally invasive spine surgery is, what defines it, what differentiates this sector of spine care from more traditional forms sure. of spine surgery. So in traditional surgery, we know we, to perform the surgery, one has to expose the entire area that is under the surgical correction. In minimally invasive surgery, we expose only a small area, and then using cameras, or we call an endoscope, we perform the same surgery as would be performed in an open surgery, but with a much smaller incision. As in the knee, for example, or the shoulder, we would use an arthroscope. As for a hernia, we'd use a laparoscope or an ap uh, appendectomy. For spinal surgery, we use an endoscope. And that is, of course, with an incision, perhaps seven millimeters, and uh, using a tubular axis, maybe two and a half uh, centimeters, we can accomplish what an open surgery would do in maybe six inches. Now, just, you bring up the um, example of uh, joint surgery and uh, knees. And I think that this is a, um, a good example of how medicine has evolved. Because 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, when people had a problem with their knee and they needed uh, surgery on the knee, usually it would involve a large incision. But the endoscope, which is a, a surgical instrument that's now used in minimally invasive spine, mm -hmm. the endoscope allowed doctors to enter the joint and to fix the problem without opening up the joint. That's right. Now, the endoscope is a tool uh, that's used uh, increasingly in minimally invasive spine surgery. That's right. Yeah. And uh, because it has the advantage, the wound healing is so much quicker when you're dealing with a seven millimeter or two and a half centimeter incision as opposed to a six inch incision. The fascial planes that are cut, the skin, the fascial planes, and then on the underlying hardware, the infection rate is lower with the minimally invasive surgery as opposed to the open surgery. And patient satisfaction is greater. Recovery time is much lower. So these are all advantages to the minimally invasive surgery as opposed to the open surgery. But it does require a special skill set, which would include perhaps use of a fluoroscope. Right. But what I think is interesting uh, about uh, minimally invasive spine surgery is it's consistent with the history of medicine and the evolution uh, of techniques and technologies in medicine. That's right. And because even when we look at cardiac care, uh, 20, 25 years ago when uh, people had a problem with their heart and they required uh, cardiac bypass right. surgery, they would have their chests cut open. But yeah. today, most cardiac procedures are carried out uh, by interventional cardiologists right. using uh, uh, small tubes and smaller instruments, correct? Sure, the percutaneous angioplasty. A lot smaller. We're dealing with a small incision in the groin and you can uh, add a stent as opposed to a large thoracotomy and uh, a, a large uh, long recovery time yeah. with a lot more risks of infection or even uh, up to cardiac uh, complications including death. But, it, but as, um, as many benefits as these techniques bring to patients, and the benefits are clear, they interestingly also create friction within the medical community as to who can and who cannot perform certain procedures. That's right. And uh, it seems that the field of spine seems to be occupying center stage in these 
current professional battles. Yes. And uh, people refer to uh, these current disputes as the spine turf wars. That's right. Um, and I mean, if, if you could just talk to the specialities that are performing spine and how the techniques have allowed doctors who weren't traditionally performing spine to now do so. Sure, and in spine you have the orthopedic spine surgeons, you have neurosurgeons, but now we have as well pain management physicians, whether they be from anesthesia backgrounds, uh, physiatry, physical medicine, rehabilitation, which, which I am, and uh, or also neurology, psychiatry. These backgrounds are well trained, in, or the, the practitioners in the use of fluoroscopy, which is essential to performing the minimally invasive spinal surgery, the use of a Can fluoroscope or CR. Can I just ask you, well, with a fluoroscopy, I mean, that's a term that doctors in the field of spine are very familiar with, but most people don't really know what fluoroscopy means. And it's, it's just a, it's a, a, a form of portable x-ray. Right? That's right, that's right. And it allows one in the operating room to take pictures of the spine to know where to position the endoscope. So the positioning of the endoscope is ultimately most important in performing a successful surgery. So when you put in the first needle and then the guide wire, if your needle is not in the proper place, the guide wire will not be in the proper place, and then subsequently the endoscope will not be in the proper position for you to bring in the the trangeurs and the trephines and the other uh, equipment used. So that is why efficient and proper use of the fluoroscopy is essential to a successful minimally invasive spinal surgery. And if I could just talk um, specifically to uh, the battle in spine between the uh, interventional pain physicians, right. uh, principally, and the neurosurgeons. I mean, there's this uh, dispute as to who can perform spinal procedures. Now, interventional pain physicians, uh, uh, for the most part, have come from the speciality of anesthesia and physiatry and their training and their experience has used significantly fluoroscopy That's right. and fluoroscopic interpretation which is uh, an essential part of minimally invasive spine surgery That's right. so if you could just uh, explain to the viewer the evolution of the speciality and the central part the fluoroscopy and fluoroscopic guidance and interpretation has played Sure. Essentially, the field of pain management we began with interlaminar epidurals, as we discussed. The reason the anesthesiologists began this field is because they already had an, a knowledge or a, a skill set with epidurals, as in pregnancy, when deliver, babies are delivered. From there, we evolved from delivery pain to other pain, pain that is from your traditional back pain, shoulder, neck, and knee pain, mostly spinal pain, though. And the interlaminar epidurals that were only uh, were uh, evolved from the simple caudal epidurals performed originally, and then from there we had the transforaminal procedures, where now a physician can enter obliquely in the spine into the foramen and treat not only the axial back or neck pain, but treat limb pain, radiating the sciatica pain down the leg or pain down the arm. This is how then the field evolved into these more complex or more elaborate pain procedures, and from there when one could interrogate, one could treat the foramen, why not bring a camera and treat the disc itself? And from there, we, from discography, which is more of a diagnostic procedure, we evolved into discectomy, where you can actually treat the disc or shave the disc or reshape the disc without doing open surgery, but through a camera using a bonjour type device, you can grab pieces of the disc and then using either a uh, Elman or using, say, the laser, homium YAG laser, you can seal the disc without doing open surgery, and or without removing the disc altogether as in the open fusions. So why, why, why let me ask you, why do you think um, so many sparks are flying in the field of spine as this battle uh, goes on between the neurosurgeons and the interventional pain physicians? The patients, if you give them a choice, either you can have an open fusion, six inch incision, with a lengthy recovery time and a high infection rate risk, or you can go with maybe a two or three centimeter incision and have a percutaneous fusion where the instrumentation is placed, as I said, percutaneously or through the skin, and using an endoscope and using the fluoroscopy, you could minimize such delays. Patients would 
obviously opt for the minimally invasive effusion over the open fusion, which is done by pain management physicians. So for this reason, the orthopedic spine surgeons and neurosurgeons are taking a hit. Those patients who were prior, in the prior days were their patients, now they fall into the pain management physicians. Uh, I'd like to take a short break now, uh, and we'll be back after the break with Dr. Aladdin.